All right, what is going on, my wunderbar people of the world? Hope today finds you well. You may be able to tell from the frozen screen right here, this is not live because it's not possible to pause Dark Souls 3. It'd be kind of awkward if you could pause Dark Souls 3 in the middle, even in the middle of multiplayer. As you can see from my purple coloration right here, this is my attempt at being a mound maker duelist because uh, I was basically just trying to get the achievement or the trophy for having all pyromancies and I was only one away. One of the pyromancies, you have to get 30 of the vertebrae shackles that are available through, you know, being a mound maker. So I decided why not at least save some of these duels using the, piece, the PlayStation 4's uh, little share system thing, record them later, commentate on them. Maybe people want to see some shit. Now, let me be perfectly blunt up front. I'm not going to talk a lot before I just get started with the duels. I'll talk more about the whip, my impressions, just kind of how it works in general after you see this but I just want to forewarn you whips don't have a lot of diversity in their moveset you're gonna be seeing a lot of repetitiveness uh, in this whole entire thing it's gonna be it, it, there's there's not gonna be a lot of different things going on I'm basically gonna be doing the entire thing if I had to sum I could easily summarize my entire game plan if somebody is throwing shit out, I'm going to try dodge R1 them, because do, uh, the whip's dodge R1 is probably either the best uh, move it has or the second best. The other one is the weapon skill itself, which I will heretofore refer to as L2, um, but yeah, it's just the whip doesn't have a lot of good moves. It doesn't have a lot of moves in general, which again, I'll discuss later on down the line, and it a lot of those just aren't very good but so my entire game plan is essentially either countering somebody being reckless with dodge r1 or alternatively um using the uh what the fuck am i trying to oh using like r1s or r2s from a distance that where they're not gonna hit like the person isn't in range i'm not trying to wait for them to be close enough to hit i'm just trying to establish kind of like a wall of moves in front of myself in order to try to get somebody to recklessly get past them in order to punish them with the L2. That's essentially my entire game plan. So this one right here is not going to be an impressive fight in any way, shape, or form. Uh, this was just my vi the very first duel I fought, and I figured why not show off the very first one. But this is a player that is, as you can see from that parry attempt, very ignorant as to how whips work. The one, I'd say the biggest positive to whips in general is the fact that they are not uh, parryable at all. However, you're seeing from the damage, they don't have that good of damage output. The uh, wep the moves themselves are rather slow. That move right there, that's the weapon skill. By far the best, uh, or the fastest wep attack that the whip has. So, but the problem is, is three hits. You have like a first hit, then kind of a middle hit to allow the last hit to actually connect. Um, and as you can see, he lived with four health there. Let me just get through all of this real quick before we move on to the next bit. Um... So, there's three hits to the weapon skill. The first two hits do negligible damage. It'll be like 10 damage for the first hit, like 80 for the second hit. But then the last hit itself will do like 350. So, it's not impressive damage. You're never going to just get hit by a whip and be just like, holy shit, that is horrifying. Please never let that happen again. Uh, but it does okay damage. I mean, that's the best thing I can say. It does okay. It's kind of, it's fairly below average in terms of what the rest of the, uh, weapons in the game can output but it's still okay um but like i said unparryable that's kind of the biggest factor it has going for them my problem i don't know what health threshold a lot of these people play at but you'll see numerous times people will live with like sub 50 health left and if i do this again i definitely need to equip at least some piece of the armor of thorns so that I don't have to try and throw out another whip move. I can kill people like that. Like, there's another one later on who only lives with two health. That guy only lived with four health. Uh, so I have the armor of thorns available so I can just roll into somebody more or less safely rather than having to take the risk of, you know, not hitting with the whip attack. So this one just pissed me the hell off. That right there is an R2. I hit, I hit, I hit, I hit with an R2. And I got punished with a backstab. If there was any one moment I could utilize to describe how much I dislike whips and how ineffective they are, it would be that moment. <laughs> Just the fact that I landed in R2 and I got backstabbed for it. Now these next two fights, nothing impressive happens in them, nothing special happens in them. 
I just wanted to show off my extreme disdain for that which is called Phantom Range. Uh, you're gonna see in this fight, like, so... Now, this player was smart. They were attempting to roll punish me, but they didn't really succeed at it, because you'll see, like, right, so that, right, that right there, that was definitely a roll punish. But you'll see these. That was not a proper roll punish. That was not a proper roll punish. Again, they're intelligent in going for it, and, you know, respect for knowing that that's how a lot of people work, but every single time I got hit there, was because I stopped and was like, I am so far out of range that I, it's irrelevant. I can't be hit from here. And then I got hit. Same thing right here. But this one's even more blatant. Like, you see, nowhere close. But then at the end, he clips forward a little bit. Um, but so that's the end of that little bit. But yeah, it's just, I just wanted to show that off to show my pain, show my suffering. Because, like I mentioned in the Scythe video, I am a very reactive person in terms of what I see visually I don't really there are a lot of people who kind of learn how you know what different sounds mean so they can react to audio cues there's a lot of people who just know intrinsically this is exactly what's going to happen if I see this specific animation I well number one I'm just not experienced enough for that but I've never been that kind of person I am just the kind of person that I see something on screen and I kind of understand this is what it means this is the range that I'm at I'm perfectly fine here, but the problem with, you know, Dark Souls PvP is that you can't trust specifically what's on your screen, that that's going to be what's going to happen, that it's going to be proper, and so because of that, it gets me killed a lot, and so I kind of, I just kind of stop playing, I mean, basically, if I see somebody throw out a move, I essentially assume that they are going to hit me at this point like even if they're all the way across the damn arena i'm just going to assume c2 health i just assume that person is going to hit me that they know something that i do not and i need to be careful um but yeah it's ugh, hate me some phantom range so is this the black knight great sword user i think i want to say so you can see well actually let me pause it real quick so you saw that i had the karthus curd sword in my offhand right there that was thanks so you saw the first duel not very impressive the second duel was even worse and is what convinced me that like i need to have a much more effective secondary weapon in my offhand because i fought this dude wearing heavy armor using uh smo's hammer who was perfectly happy just downing all of his estus very very predictable but the problem is the whip doesn't have the kind of burst damage necessary for you to actually be able to kill somebody who is willing to use Estus. So in a dual based format, whips are very good because people won't heal, people will just, you, you can kind of chip them to death. But uh, the second guy was perfectly happy using Estus. And so because of that, I absolutely, I just black crystalled out like after the fifth Estus or so. And, um,. Immediately once I was gone, I equipped the Karthus Curve Sword so I could use that against people because no, the whip is not really that good at catching people that are running away. It's a, it's potentially effective, but you need to be really, really, really tight on your timing due to the slowness overall of whip-based moves in general. Whereas with the Karthus Curve Sword, like you can, it's so easy to catch rolls with that weapon. It's so easy to punish people who are being reckless with that weapon. Uh, it has a pair it has a move that is invulnerable to parries like it's just it's so so good and I would say so with the whip overall I would say I probably had around like a win rate of 50 50 I won 50 percent I won half I lost half with the Karthus curve sword I won like 90 percent of the fights and they were so easy to do it with it's it, it's not even comparable but anyway so this was actually where the majority of my wins came from I would say out of I mean, I probably got, like, so I needed 30 vertebrae shackles. I think I had, like, two or three already from just, you know, playing through the game. Um, so I would say I probably got around half of the remaining ones through the whip and half of the other ones with the Karthus Curve Sword. Out of, you know, let's say 15 that I got, 15 wins that I got with the whip, at least 9 or 10 of them were against people like this dude who using a very heavy weapon and very impatient with it very impatient using that weapon and so because of that i was able to just space them out fairly easily with the whip as you can see right there and just punish their recklessness um and so you know 
from my experience, it kind of seems like the whip beats heavy weapons, but I actually don't think it does. I think heavy weapons can actually beat the whip if the heavy weapon user is the more patient of the two. Because like I mentioned before, the whip's attacks are not very fast, and so because of that, if they just wait for some motion from the whip and just react with an attack that has hyper armor, they'll just hyper armor through it, and that trade will always be in the heavy weapon user's favor. There's no question about that. Uh, whether or not it'll actually work in practice, I don't know, because I never ran into a patient heavy weapon user. They were all fairly reckless, fairly just, you know, I want to come in and Hulk smash you, I don't care about spacing, I don't care about patience, just let me bash you into the ground. So I didn't really get a good outlook, but I feel like, you know, in terms of being a theory fighter, I think heavy weapons can do very, very well against the whip, you just can't be impatient and rush things. And so you see right there, again, like a, a fair amount of the people I beat were people like that who just didn't know that whips aren't parryable, and so I just kept punishing them for trying to go for parries over and over. But yeah, like, I know, ugh. It's just, it seems so dull. Like, I don't know if, you know, anybody else enjoys this kind of thing. I guess I could kind of compare and contrast to you know kind of like real life competitive fighting like MMA not many people enjoy the ground based game they don't really enjoy the wrestling the jujitsu aspect of it a lot of people just want to see a fist fight essentially and so I would compare it to kind of like you know you have the S stock you have katanas you have straight swords curb swords those are the fist fight weapons then you have weapons like this uh, heavy weapons if properly utilized that you know, you got a scalpel in your hands. You're being, you got to be clean. You got to be efficient. You have to be patient. And so, I don't know if this is really enjoyable to watch from that kind of a standpoint. But in terms of just like, I don't know, to pull a quote from what is it, Jim Ross and WWE a slobber knocker? The whip is not going to provide one of those. But it's, it's really unfortunate. I think the next is the next one, Katana. I think I do legitimately believe whips. Yeah, but it's Katana. I do generally, but genuinely believe that whips lose absolutely clean. Whips themselves lose absolutely clean to R1, just the running R1. One button, one tactic with Katanas, I believe, beats whips clean. So you saw right there, I tried to call him out coming in, and he still had time to run from that distance away and punish me. That's the only way at least in my narrow-minded, inexperienced view, that you're ever going to beat a Katana user, somebody like uh, rolling using Godards and using rolling R1, that kind of stuff. Like, you're never going to beat somebody like that without parrying. And so I was kind of foolish right here to take out my whip. I just saw him take out his whip, and I was like, oh, hey, whip bros, let's do this, man, and then... He pulled out the katana and finished the damn job. I should have just stuck with the Karthus Curved Sword. And then I would have finished the damn job. Because, the, I mean... Oh, okay, let's pause this right here. Because we don't care about this part in terms of the whip. Because as you can see, I'm back to the Karthus Curved Sword. But I do have this here for a reason. So, whips in general. The pro So, you obviously saw many moments of me hitting people with the whip. You saw there's nothing there that's particularly damaging in terms of just like oh god please never hit me with that again please never let me be put into a situation where I can be hit with that again whips do not have any sort of intimidation factor behind them so that's kind of a problem and the reason being is that whips have zero combos they have no combos in their entire move set even a point blank so basically when I saw that R1 R1 doesn't combo whether one-handed or two-handed R2, R1 doesn't combo, R1, R2 doesn't combo, and so once I saw all that, you know, like none of the regular moves are hitting, maybe I can land a hit and then combo into the weapon skill, because the first hit of the weapon skill is the fastest move that whips have. None of that combos. Point blank R2 didn't combo. Like, just to describe to you how slow the whip moves are, I got a parry on somebody, and which obviously causes a stagger, they were able to roll out of the follow-up R1. Because that's a problem with the whips is that they cannot backstab and they cannot repost. I don't really know why. It's very easy for me. Like, it took me all of two seconds to just think, like, 
for a backstab. Why not just, you know, kick the back of their knees, force them prone, wrap the whip around their neck, yank up a little bit, let it go, they crumple to the ground. There's your backstab. Same thing with the repost. You just gotta spin them around first. I don't... I don't understand why, from a mechanical standpoint and from a balancing standpoint, why they would not give whips the capability of backstab and repost, but, you know, whatever. I'm not a developer for From Software, so what the hell do I know? Um... But so when I saw, I knew that going in, and so I thought, all right, but maybe I can get like a heavy punish based off of landing a parry because you get when you get that stagger, I I would say a repost is probably universally going to do the most damage that you can possibly do to somebody, but they still take more damage from hits than they would normally if they're in that kind of I've just been parried stagger animation. So I tried to punish with an R1 and then go into the weapon skill to see if it would combo. They rolled out of the R1. The R1 itself wasn't even fast enough to catch them after a parry stagger. That is ridiculous. And it really does just highlight how flawed the whips are in general. Like that moment and me getting backstabbed for landing an R2. Like it's... Whips have issues. I do actually believe that they are the worst weapon type in the game. I think a lot of people go back and forth in regard to whether or not fist weapons are the worst. Or whether or not whips are the worst. Now, the reason why I disagree that fist weapons are the worst is solely because of the dexterity based mannequin claws. I actually think those are secretly godlike, and I really hope somebody tries to delve into them. Like, it's not gonna be me. I do not enjoy the PvP enough for this to try and master them and really get used to them. But I think the combination of the bleed factor, um, as well as the fact that the weapon skill is the dagger dodge, which is incredibly fast, has a lot of invincibility, um, allows you to get into that required range in order to make use of them, and allows you to punish a lot of things that would otherwise not be punishable. And so because of that, I actually think mannequin claws are very, very good and could potentially actually be a really, really good weapon, and that's the only reason why I elevate the fist category above whips is because I see that potential in the mannequin claws. Whereas I don't see any potential whatsoever in any of the whip weapons. None. At all. It makes me sad. Um, but so, I mean, just, you know, the lack of combo ability, lack of diversification and move sets that even make the whips interesting to use to begin with. So a lot of weapons, whether you're one-handing them or two-handing them, provide some variation to the move set. You get some different moves. You Maybe you get some different attack angles. Who knows what, you know. But in general, one-handed move set and two-handed move set are all different. Not so with the whips. Uh, the only difference between the one-handed moveset and the two-handed moveset is that is the R2. The first R2 for one-handed is like just this horizontal kind of sweeping attack. If you're two-handing it, you do this really kind of straight out, probably the furthest distancing hitting hit that the whip has in its arsenal from that, and then it goes back to the sweeping horizontal attack. Um, and so that's the only difference otherwise all of the r1s are the same the jumping attacks are the same the dodging attack is the same everything is the same except for that first r2 so not amazing <laughs> not very interesting oddly enough there's more recovery to two-handed though uh very easily testable if you just try the one-handed moves throw out an attack and then you mash on dodge versus doing it two-handed you'll notice the two when you're when you have it two-handed it'll take like an additional half second or so of recovery time before you're able to dodge. I have no idea why that's how it is, uh, but that is how it is. And for the, another oddity for the move set is that if you charge the R2 for any other weapon in the game, if you charge an R2 fully and let it go, it's going to cause a lot of damage. Potentially, it's going to do something like knock somebody down, knock somebody in the air. It's going to do something different to their state. I have seen nothing different between just a normal R2 and a charged R2. They do the exact same damage, they do the exact same stagger, and as far as I can tell, they have the exact same range. I do not know what the purpose is of the charged R2, unless you want to call it a mind game to try and you know get somebody to reactively dodge to the beginning of it, and they dodge out, and then you let it go and it hits them. But just doing that with R1 and then punishing the dodge with an L2 is more effective anyway. <laughs> so... Yeah, I'm not too hot on whips. I do I do categorize them as the worst weapon class in the game. But so let's talk about this. You can see this man right here is using a Farron Greatsword. Not well. That's... You can't do that. 
those moves are so easily parryable, you just you cannot do that. Um, I do have some experience myself with the Farron Greatsword because the build that I ended up making a quality build was originally intended solely to utilize. So that was a bad. I mean, that was a bad idea, but I didn't know he would be. I did not know he was going to use Estus. But so look at that. That barely did more than half my health. I have the Fire Clutch Ring equipped at this time. Uh, which makes me take more damage. It's sh it's supposed to increase the amount of fire damage that you do. It should be good with the witch's locks. Uh, unfortunately, so that's I mean that's it. That's all that happens. That was the grand summarization of that fight. It was very impressive, right? Not even a little bit. Um, but so the fire clutch ring is supposed to raise your fire damage, but I th by I think like 10%, and then you take 15% more damage. But people have done a lot of testing, and those kinds of things like rings that are supposed to increase your resistance to certain things and rings that are supposed to increase your damage with certain damage types are actually significantly less effective in pvp than they are in pve i have no idea why it may be a bug i don't know but so people have basically i think they said like instead of the 10 percent boost you're supposed to get you get like three percent or something like that like it's drastically lowered and it is absolutely not at all worth the increased damage that you take but the reason why i'm saying that is because even with that damage malice applied to it this ultra great sword weapon comboed two moves on me and still barely did more than half my health that's pathetic and i don't have a lot of health i think i had 27 vigor right here which would ember would give me like what 1300 health or something like that it's not impressive i don't have a lot of health i'm only level like 100 here um just in case you do care about statistics at all i have like 35 intelligence and faith I think minimal endurance, like maybe either 15 or 20 endurance, 18 attunement, I believe is the threshold for having three attunement slots. That's how many I had. 27 vigor, and I think that's it. I think that was what my... I, I know I was around like level I, either the high 90s or the low 100s. I can't remember which. But I was not at like the, you know, collective agreement of level 120 yet. But anyway, so... That's just, the damage is pathetic of the Farron Greatsword, and that kind of highlights one of my big whips in general, as well as the Farron Greatsword. Kind of highlight my biggest problem with this game, and it is that any weapon that kind of seeks to diversify itself, to be unique in the scope of the game, and kind of, you know, be interesting, rather than just the basic weapon type of its class tends to be the least effective version of that weapon. The Farron Greatsword is an awful Ultra Greatsword. It is terrible. Regular Greatswords outdamage the Farron Greatsword. Whips are just awful in general. The Pontiff Knight Great Scythe, which I was very excited for, is the worst scythe in my opinion. It's definitely worse than the Corvian Great Scythe. I don't know if it's actually worse than the Great Scythe, but it's just... Ugh. So many, so many of the weapons, like almost all of the boss soul weapons were terrible. There are some good ones. The Hollow Slayer Greatsword is pretty good if you combine it with the Leo Ring. Um, what was another boss soul weapon that I used quite a bit? The Dragon Slayer Great Axe and Yorm's Great Machete are both two of the best strength weapons available in the game. That's undeniable. But in general, like almost all of the boss soul weapons are terrible. Almost all of the, uh... Weapons like the Farron Greatsword, the Old Wolf, Old Wolf Curved Greatsword, that are like unique and different and have kind of interesting factors to them, they suck. And that makes me so. I, 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 and I don't want to get too preachy, so I'm not going to go on for it for too long of a time. But I just that kind of highlights my biggest problem is it's like a, from an objective standpoint, you are far better off using these like basic weapons because they are better. From a factual standpoint like there's no arguing that these other weapons that don't have any unique properties to them don't have anything really i don't want to say interesting going on with them because interesting is an opinionated thing interesting to me but they don't really have anything unique to them they just are it's what the weapon class is built around they're going to be they are objectively the most effective weapons in the game and so you're intentionally crippling yourself a lot of the times if you don't use if you want to kind of you know use something that isn't just the same exact thing as 90 percent of the other weapon class so i don't know it makes me kind of sad but again i don't want to get too preachy i don't want to get too far into it this is mostly supposed to be about the whip stuff so that is that thank you for listening i will talk to you all later